Hey guys, Jared Krauss, host of the Buying Online Businesses podcast. And do you want to learn how to buy a website from somebody who's bought two successful transactions, one of which have made them $25,000 in just four short months from flipping it on? Well, that's exactly what Zach Zorn has done. And in today's episode, I get to speak to Zach about two of the sites that he's bought and what he's actually learned from buying those websites, starting out as a total rookie in this game. And we get to cover what we need to learn throughout doing our due diligence and our research. And then we talk about how to minimize our risk when wanting to go away and buy these certain websites. We also talk about a massive blunder that most web website investors make when they're buying their first website, which is narrowing their mindset and preventing themselves from buying a really good opportunity because they have this perception that it's not right for them. And what my favorite key takeaways and what I find that was most valuable about this episode is we talk about how to keep open-minded to be able to ensure that we can buy websites that have great opportunities because sometimes people often have a position where they see websites for sale and they have lots of problems. But what most people don't realize is that problems are just opportunities in disguise. So if you're looking to learn from a couple of professionals that bought multiple websites, go away, listen to this podcast episode. It won't disappoint. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Buying Online Businesses podcast. Today, I'm very grateful I've got a, a fellow sea lover with me, uh, Zach Zorn. He's from moneynomad.com. Uh, and Zach, you're a digital nomad, like, and I know this life really well. We haven't spoken about this off air at all, really. Uh, but I've been traveling on and off for the last eight years, and that's exactly why I got into this space, so I could have a lifestyle. I didn't want to be like uber rich and all this sort of stuff, but I wanted to have a lifestyle I could make some money online, right? Yeah. How, did you, how did you sort of get to, into this space, like, and why? You know, I got into it through FBA, which is fulfilling my Amazon, Amazon selling for the same exact reasons. I have a real passion for saltwater fishing and I want to spend as much time out on a boat as possible, which being on a boat doesn't allow you to be hands on um, as much on businesses. So finding more of the passive style businesses, websites, income, things like that was a real appeal to me. And the Amazon selling led into website investing, which I've been full speed into for the last couple of years now, because it offers like that, that freedom you're just talking about. Yeah, it's a good life. I mean, and people that don't want to, you know, do the whole fishing thing that you like you're into and, and traveling for surfing for me, I found a lot of my clients, they just want to have time with their mm -hmm. friends and with their family. And I think that's the most valuable thing you can ever have is like experiences yeah. with the people you love, right? Um, yeah, it basically gives you the freedom to whatever you're passionate about, whether that's hanging out with your family or traveling or whatever, it gives you that freedom to pursue whatever you enjoy and makes you happy. You're not stuck to that office grind every single day, which I've seen so many people uh, become unhappy with. Yeah, it's very common that, you know, the nine to five slug and it's, it's all over the place that everybody talks about it and you've got so many podcasts about it. But yeah. you, you were drawn to FBA. Now you've bought a couple of websites. Now, how many websites have you bought now? I've bought two now. Awesome. And uh, I actually bought Money Nomad because I thought it was a really good base for, my whole point was I wanted to, I learned so much from FBA selling and website flipping yeah. that I knew there was tons of other people that wanted to learn about it and do the same. So I bought Money Nomad so I could share my stories about both, both um, online endeavors. Yeah, And, uh, you know, the, the gentleman who owned it before was kind of underutilizing it, but it's a really good base. So that's why I bought it. And then the first website I bought was a tech review website uh, that was monetized straight with like affiliate income. And that was a pure moneymaker. Money Nomad's more of a, I want to make it a brand and uh, just a helpful information spot. Yeah, there's so many awesome articles. And I know you got drop downs on your menu and there's just so much value and information there for everybody listening um it's worthwhile checking out uh different types of routes that you can make money online and you're well versed in that and so what drew you to buying your first site like what you know you you talk about this tech one like why why go the tech route and like yeah why why did you buy instead of build because that's something so, that we're all about too 
you know, this was some, this was about a six month mental journey that I went on because I, it took about six months. I realized, okay, I want to own an affiliate website, but I didn't know if that looked like me building one or buying one. And the more I did research, I just empire flippers kept coming up, coming up, coming up. And I was weighing all the pros and cons between buying and building. And it just made more sense. I had some capital saved up so I could outlay, uh, you know, a, I could outlay the cash up front to buy yeah. and start seeing income on day one rather than building with the hopes of seeing income three to six months down the road once the article started to rank. And at the time, I didn't have any website background, SEO background. So I wanted to learn from someone by buying a site, seeing what they did and, and learn like, you know, I want to be hands on in my learning and kind of learn, emulate what someone else did. So that's why I went the buying route. Such a good option. And normally people go like the, what I tell people is that 95% of all startups fail. And that's the position that I came from, right? Is like, yeah. I was like, all right, I wanted to do like, you know, I don't know if you know, you know, probably don't know my story, Zach, but I wanted to make money online. So, mm -hmm. and I was, I was caught myself in Egypt and I was being a dive master and I was like, I want to do this so bad, this lifestyle. And I literally was like, I need a goal to be able to do this. And my goal was to travel the world and make money. So I literally oh. pulled out my, just opened up my laptop. I'm like, how to travel the world and make money online. <laughs> 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 and what popped up was like people travel blogging. And I was yeah. like, wait, that's me. Like, I'm going to be a travel blogger. Put my hand up for that. And uh, <laughs> it, was, it, it was fun, funny because I didn't really make much money but I did learn yeah. a lot and the learning curve was like a long time. Like it was like two years that I learned a lot in that time. And then I was like, as soon as I bought one, I was like, you know, I was in the, I was in the, I was in the zone of making money. And I feel that you just skip such a really hard part that most people go through. Right. And I think that hard part going through it is beneficial because you probably learned so much during that two years. But, um, I also was limited with my time. Mm. and I wanted, I knew that if, if I was starting to get monthly income, I knew it would drive me to keep progressing the site. And I knew I might get discouraged if I'm putting in all the six months worth of work for not much, um, not much to show with like organic traffic and affiliate income. So yeah, just skipping that whole learning curve, mm. um, was really beneficial in its own way. Yes. I probably missed out on a lot of, um, you know, different experiences by failing. Yeah. But I also learned a tremendous amount in such a short amount of time. Yeah, for sure. Because you had, and for everybody listening is when you have somebody who has built a website and they're growing it and, and, you know, they're running it. When you buy a website, you normally factor in uh, a certain time period or a certain amount of training you can get from the previous owner and they teach you how to yeah. run it. And if you're a sponge, much like what you are, Zach, and me, I'm obsessed yeah. with learning, uh, then you can learn. You can just extract so much from them. And if you build a relationship with them, that can be an ongoing thing. And it's really valuable to have relationships with the seller because that brings up other opportunities in the future. And so, I want to ask you, like, how did you, like, what sort of terms did you negotiate to get training for that tech site and how did that come through? So first timers can learn that too. Yeah. So Empire Flippers in each listing as when you, list, so I've also sold a business through Empire Flippers. So I've been on both sides of it, which yeah. I think is really good experience. Yeah. So when you're selling your site, you can indicate how much um, training or availability you will offer with you selling your site. Some people offer a week, some people offer 60 days, three Skype calls. In this case, this gentleman, I think he offered like 45 days of support wow. with a ton of Skype calls. He really, he wanted to see the site succeed mm. and he really cared about the person buying it. And so I took full advantage of that in the sense of, I wanted to be a good steward to all of the work that he'd done for about four years, built four years building the site. Mm. I didn't want to ruin the site. Um, and I also wanted to learn like what he thought he was doing well and, and what he could approve on. And so, yeah, I just kind of picked his brain with, uh, with regards to SEO, the site layout, intricacies with the plugins, all the different aspects. And 
I'm so glad that I utilized him as a resource because A, he was totally happy to help and B, it cut down that learning curve and I was able to jump in and kind of feel one with the site really quickly. Yeah, that's so well done. Like, congratulations on getting those, you know, that 45 days is huge. It's like you said, it's normally like three Skype calls or whatever, Yeah. Um, 30 days type thing. And for myself on my second website I bought, I negotiated that um, I'd have a little bit more as well. It wasn't quite like 45 days, but what I did yeah. for everybody listening is I really ensured that I added value, like fun and a bit of jovialness and the person enjoyed the seller enjoyed speaking to me um, yeah. because I had a professional approach or tried to at that time when I was only just learning, but that allowed me to have a longer, like, you know, I could just, after a year and a half, I could, I could flick them an email or two and that would help me, which is really cool. So you touched on something about the professionalism. Yeah. I think that's really important. You want to be very conscious of everybody's time. You don't want to be wasting the seller's time and asking them, kind of uh, insignificant questions. Yeah. But if you're mindful of their time and asking very detailed questions that you're then putting into practice, I think that's great. So yeah, just being mindful of professionalism, I, I think that's that goes a long way. For sure. Thank you. And so there's obviously challenges in finding, you know, a website to buy. There's a lot of research, yeah. a lot of due diligence. Like what what sort of obstacles did you face? And what were you, so a two part question, what were you looking for yeah. when buying a website? Like what sort of website were you looking to buy? It may have been affiliate, like you said, but what mm -hmm. obstacles did you, did you come across along the journey of that? Yeah. So I, and this is something that I learned that uh, I need to be more open-minded. I originally on my first site purchase was looking for a niche that I was interested in. Yes. And, and, and now I'm at the point where, and, you know, I, I don't care kind of what the niche is. If I see opportunity, uh, that's, that, that's all I need to know um, or need to see. But when I first started, it was I wanted to do something I was passionate about, which was fishing mm. and tech. Mm. And so that's why when this tech website, I was already involved with like drones and 3D printers. It was a good fit. Mm. So, and I knew that tech products usually sell for more money. So when you're getting a 5% commission, of a $300 3D printer, it equates to more money than a 5% commission of a $20, um, you know, kitchen utensil, whatever it might be. Yeah. So I knew that I had to get less clicks and I could still make a decent amount of money. Uh, and then the obstacles that I found were, I didn't know how to manage a website. I had, like I said before, I didn't know anything. So the obstacle was getting familiar with the SEO terminology and kind of white hat tactics <laughs> and how to employ those yeah. because there's a lot of shady tactics, but I knew I was like, Hey, if I just spent, I spent 49,000 on the site. Yep. I was like, if I'm going to spend 49,000, I want to make sure that I don't spoil this money and get a Google penalty or something like that. So I wanted to learn the white hat ways. So I guess the bi biggest obstacle was learning how to navigate WordPress, use all the intricacies of that, then also learn the SEO aspect at the same time in parallel. Yeah, that's great. I was my um, very, I want to touch on some of the things you did say. When, when I first started looking, I was familiar with WordPress sites. So I nailed my search down. I was like, and this is like many years ago now that I narrowed my search down to just WordPress sites mm -hmm. and that, you know, I wasn't as open and optimistic, like you said, that we need to be when yeah. we're doing this. And that may have limited some of the scope or different types of websites I was going to buy. And I've made a big mistake and I want to apologize to everybody uh, listening to the podcast is that once I, I, I did a video and some training and I told people like, when you're going to buy your first website, stick to what you know. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is like, if you like, and people may go, Oh, I really know a lot about surfing. Right. Or I really know a lot about fishing. I'm only going to buy a website that's related to that because mm -hmm. I know it. And I didn't really explain it well enough to, to share with them that stick to what you know, as in, in the online space, the business model that makes sense to you the most 
Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, um, if you could get to know something that may become one of your hobbies because you would like it. So I'm so glad that you picked that up because a lot of people listening do narrow their search down and be like, I love soccer or I love football and I'm just going to yeah. buy one. But, you know, how many sites are out there that are just like, just for soccer or just there's not I've there's, seen not, there's not many you yeah. know and that's that's what i found like fishing like, i couldn't find a fishing site yeah and, and I'm glad even more, yeah and fishing is even more prominent of an on an online space to make money from than like surfing and a smaller sort of sport because totally. fishing is massive right so yeah but everybody listening, I think the biggest takeaway, and thank you so much for this, Zach, is that yeah. really not narrow our searches down. And that's a, like, that is a massive obstacle. And you know, what? the first site I ever talked to the seller on was a home security camera site. Mm. And I didn't end up buying it. And it all worked out. All the sites that I passed up, it, it worked out, right? But I always think back and I was like, man, I didn't know anything about security cameras. But looking back, I was like, there was so much room for improvement from monetization, conversion. Um, way of looking at it that I was like, Ooh, that would have been a good one to, to probably buy. But yeah. it, it all worked out in the end. But now, you know, Spencer went on, I, and he talked about maybe a year ago that he bought a mom blog. Yeah. And is this Spencer? Was, Horse? It is of a niche pursuit. Yeah. He bought a mom blog. Well, now I get why. Well, he's definitely not a mom. <laughs> and, but he, uh, he knew how to monetize a site and how to run a site and to improve the user experience and all of that. So it doesn't matter the content. He knew he could fix the, the framework of it. Yeah. And it doesn't matter the product as well, right? Like I'm, right. I'm a surfy bum and I bought Zach a website that sells tailored made suits. Like <laughs> I don't wear suits unless I go to a <laughs> wedding once a year. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Like, that you, understood, you understand business and marketing and the intricacies of websites exactly exactly and that's why i went for it because i could see that this was a very undervalued website that was for sale and i picked it up for a stellar deal and that's mm -hmm. something that you know these they're normally the best opportunities it may not be something that you're just like oh my god like i love fake plants or flowers or whatever it is yeah um but you can see like there's so much opportunity that you can use this website to grow and build and like you said like you learn a bit of seo and stuff like that so when you're coming back zach to buying a site like what are some of the things that you were looking for outside of like that obstacle that obstacles that you mentioned before like you know you were thinking about wordpress what other what are some other things that like tick the boxes for you and why? yeah so Basically, how I look at it is we're buying websites on a multiple, right? Whether that's uh, a 20 times multiple or 40 times. Meaning, theoretically, if everything stays consistent, you should get your money back in that 24 month or 40 month multiple, right? So, but I look at it like, well, I want to speed up how quickly I'm going to get my money back so that I don't have the risk. Because once all your money's back, you're really risk free if anything happens to the site. And so I always looked at what could I do to improve my income so that I could now maybe the site can earn its money back in 20 months instead of 32, something yep. like that. Yep. So I was looking for uh, monetary changes, monetary conversion changes that I could do to increase click through rate, um, conversions, things like that. So can I put call to actions? Could I improve the, the ad banners? Were they even running ads? Uh, were there were there bad links going towards the Amazon pages? All of those sorts of things, fixing all of those, whether it's only a, a half a percent of conversion increase for each item, it adds up, especially over the months and years. Yeah, see, that's so great because what people when they're first looking at websites and they they start to learn like all these different things of like i can do different ads and put things in different places and do this and do that email marketing whatever it is and people see that there's websites and they've got all these problems mm -hmm. what people don't realize and i'm glad that you said this is that problems are opportunities just in disguise yeah. right yeah. and so like this is what I teach my clients. You know, if, if you're in my inner community, there's, we, we learn so many ways to 
see a business for what it is, the shell, and go, mm-hmm. all right, what are the opportunities here and how could you grow them and what would you do? So what's the, you know, what's the low hanging fruit? What's the yeah. more yes. longer term goal? And then the further goal into that. And, and that's how I look at it. I break it down by the kind of a low hanging fruit. I use that phrase a lot. Yeah. I like websites that have tons of low hanging fruit that you can pick off with not much work and you can see the meter get moved, your income meter move. Mm-hmm. And then there's the bigger ones, which is creating content, building links, and these more ambitious goals. But I, I was on a phone call with a gentleman today, and I said, hey, very, very first thing you should do when we get off the call is install a plugin that opens all of your uh, links into a new tab. I was like, I guarantee you, you're gonna see an increase in, or decrease in bounce rate, and an increase in conversions. Just from that simple, two minute change. And I think a lot of people get overwhelmed as they look at a site and they see everything that they want to do. Mm. Well, what I do is I write out everything I want to do and then I categorize it by the easiest, the easiest items that can have the most bang for their buck. And I start knocking those off. Yeah, I love it. And I had this guy who, uh, who was on the podcast. He's been on twice now. His name's Kim Barrett. He's a marketing guy. He's a gun. He, he's made you know tens of millions of dollars. Uh, he's from Australia and he talks about there's low hanging fruit, but what he talks about is the jam and it's the low hanging fruit that's already snapped off and been squished and it's on the ground and all you have to do is scoop it up and, and taste it because it's, it's the jam, right? And his thing where he calls the jam is that there's all you have to do is what you said is something so similar, it's like something so small of like changing it to a um you know open every single link they click on your page in a new tab or somewhere else to a different page in a new tab that's the jam because it takes you what like 15 minutes to do or something and then so it's the same with if you've got a website and you're looking at buying it and they've got an email list and it's got like five thousand people on it but they email them maybe once a month or twice a month and they've never really monetized it. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, this is like a hot like email list. They're opening it, but they've never been like, here, you should probably buy this. It's like that is yeah. the jam. And they're the things. Well, here's a... no, no, go ahead, finish. Then I have no, a good it. jam one. Yeah, oh, go so ahead. here's a good jam one that I see all the time that maybe even people listening right now never thought of. If you're using Amazon Associates as your main moneymaker, Make sure you have it so that your your tracking code changes per whatever Amazon uh, country the the reader's in. So, for example, if you just have you know if you create a tracking code which is the U.S. Amazon, but someone from Canada reads your site and clicks on it and then buys on the Canadian marketplace, you're not going to get uh, the that conversion commission. Yeah. or the commission, right? But Amazon has there's several plugins. Amazon even has one where the link will change depending on like the, the geotype of where the person's coming in from. So if 20% of your traffic's coming in from the UK and another 10% from Canada, but you only have US links, you're leaving 30% potentially on the table. That's such a good piece of jam. And the question that you guys want to ask that when you do speak to a seller of this and ask them, like, have you set up conversion tracking mm-hmm. or international conversion tracking? And you don't need to tell them what it is or anything like that. You, you can keep it to yourself, but then you at least know like, wow, there's some jam right there. Maybe that's something you do and you buy it and flip it, right? Like, yeah. and that's what you've done is, and Zach, for everybody listening, he bought a site from Empire Flippers, built it up and flipped it. Um, how, how many months did you have it for? And what did you, how much, how much did you grow? About, about four months. I uh, bought it for 49. I sold it for 75. Wow. All said and done, I made over like I made over 30 grand in profit between the difference in buying and selling and the monthly uh, affiliate earnings that it was making over those four months. So, you know, it, it worked out really, really well. I didn't buy it with the intent to flip, mm. but the opportunity arose and uh, I'm glad that I was able to exit it because now I got, well, it's a good thing and bad thing, right? So now my eyes are opened. Yeah. And now I just want to do this like full speed all the time, and, which is good. Right. But it's also yeah. like, okay, I need to, I need to work focus on like some other life things as well. Uh, 
but I didn't go into it with the mindset of flipping, but that's also another, I was open-minded enough to be willing to sell it when I saw that, Hey, this might start turning into a poor investment. It might be time to exit. Yeah. And so no, I wasn't locked in on, I have to keep this. I have to keep this. So I think one way to be successful in website investing is being open-minded and being willing to venture down a path that you didn't intend from at the beginning. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great thing to, to give us because, and that's the same thing that I thought of is like, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? Let's say the site doesn't really, I, I stuff up and I don't really perform and I don't know what I'm doing when I buy the site. Cause it's my first one. I can always just give it to a broker like Empire Flippers or just go to like, hey, Greg or Eric or Joe or Justin from Empire Flippers, like, can you like sell my site? And you're going to get your money back, right? Like, so that's such a good mindset, Zach. Well, and so they charge, but to anywhere, I think it's from five to 15%, depending on the price range. But most of the sites we're talking about are going to fall in that 15% uh, brokerage commission. So originally, you know how I was talking about earning my money back? Yep. First, I wanted to earn enough back to cover the 15% fee. Yes. Then I was like, okay, I know that I can get rid of this site, get all my money back without losing a dime. Then the next goal was er, getting all my money back during, by the increase in the multi, by uh, the 24 months or whatever it might be. Yep. So I kind of had tiered levels of goals that limited my uh, exposure, if you will. For sure, because you could sell it at different multiples than the one you actually had to buy it at. Yeah. Yeah. So finding these sites, um, you know, there's Empire Flippers and there's so many different other brokers out there as well. Yeah. Tomorrow I've got a uh, podcast we're recording with Effie International. Oh, right on. The founder, um, which is going to be fun as well. I've, I've never actually spoken to him, which is funny enough. Uh, but there's so many different types of places you can buy these websites from, and there's so many different things that we need to do in due diligence. What are some of the things that you sort of tripped up on or you worried about when you were going to buy your first one or your second one? And what are some of the mistakes that you think you may have made or, you know, could have easily made that first time investors really need to look out for? One, it wasn't an issue, but it could have been. This is one of the reasons why I sold the site. I, I bought a site that had, it may have had, I think it had 200 or so pieces of content, but only about four of them were the real money makers, right? So now looking back, had I lost one or two of those four, well, I would have lost a huge chunk of my profitability. So I think I, I made the mistake and like I said, it ended up working out, but I bought a site that was making too much of its traffic was coming in on just a small number of articles. So now when I'm looking at sites, I'm looking for sites that have traffic spread out through maybe 10 articles or so. So if I lose one, whether that's a D rank or whatever it might be, the the income doesn't get affected as much. And, you know, using Google analytics is a great way to find the top earning articles. And then I'm a huge fan of Ahrefs. Yeah. I don't know if you use Ahrefs. Yeah. But at the time, I didn't really, I had a subscription when I was buying and I'd throw the URLs in. I didn't really know what I was looking at. So if you're thinking about buying, get a subscription to Ahrefs, start consuming as much of their blog content as possible because it's phenomenal content. Yeah. And and process any site you're thinking of buying through Ahrefs. And you can see like, you can kind of spot PBNs. If you see a huge spike in referring domains, you know, was this a PBN? Did they add a bunch of links or did they have a viral piece of content? So, and and when you're buying a site, look for sites, in my personal opinion, that have traffic and income spread out through multiple articles. And it's not just one main article because if you lose it, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Yeah, that, that would definitely hurt. And another thing that I've seen happen to people, Zach, is that it's not just on the site where people are viewing but also say you do have a site that is getting equal traffic to all of the pages and it's only coming from Facebook ads yes. or Google yes. ads. You got to be like, Whoa, like this is, if, if something happens with the 
Google AdWords algorithm or the Facebook algorithm, which does happen. I mean, I know a lot of people have been affected by Facebook this year and yeah. spent a lot of money and I've been affected by Facebook this year as well. And then also if it's just, you know, getting organic traffic from uh, you know, the search engine, such as Google or Yahoo or Bing is like, is that if, are you susceptible to some algorithm changes because you've got some gray hat, uh, tactics of the site yeah. you bought. And that's why that Ahrefs is so important. There are some similar uh, similar tools out there, but Ahrefs yeah. is the best. It's a premium subscription. There's one really cool one. I don't know if you know, Zach. I'm sure you've heard of Neil Patel, but his free one yeah. is getting really good. Is it? Yeah, I've definitely yeah. heard of it. I've never used it. Mm. Um, I And his content's good. I just kind of, I just connected with the Ahrefs content. Yeah. And, I even I sent the guys an email, Tim and uh, and uh, I think Kevin. Yeah, I sent them an email. I literally follow their content. I do exactly what they say, and it works. Like it's unbelievable. If you actually do what some of these experts are, are preaching and see it through to completion, you're yeah. going to get organic traffic and you're going to make affiliate income. Yeah, awesome. And so let's talk about that in growing a site. So. In your opinion, knowing what you know now mm -hmm. and in today, like today's realm, like 2019, middle of 2019, like how would you grow a site? Would you lean more towards SEO or would you lean more towards pay-per-click? And if so, why? I'm a huge advocate of ranking content organically. So relying on SEO to get organic content <laughs> just because of, I never want to be in the position where I have to spend money to make money. I think that if you built a site from the ground up and you want to monetize it straight through Facebook ads and things like that, that's totally fine. But when you're outlaying a bunch of cash, I think it's a wise invest or an unwise investment. If you now you buying a site and now you have to spend money every month on ads just to get traffic. So, I'm huge in organically ranking content through white hat tactics. And then once I have content that I know gets organic traffic and organic conversions, I'll then boost that with uh, Google ads. Yeah. And so maybe it's sitting down at the fifth position, but the topic I'm talking about doesn't cost that much, maybe 40 cents a click to then take the AdWords spot at the top. And now I'm, now I have a really good chance of someone going to my article but it was proven beforehand to get conversions and that people were resonating with it. And I just give it a little boost and I've seen massive uh, income increase from doing that on specific articles. Yeah. Especially because, and I've noticed this and, and uh, I just talked to somebody just off air before, after we recorded another podcast, his name, Doug Cunnington. And we talked about a person who was boosting like spending money on adwords for a youtube channel or for you know a blog post or whatever for a certain amount of time and that nearly the, the same exact same amount of time after that they kept a lot of the ranking a lot of the traffic and you know just by you doing a boost it mm -hmm. doesn't mean you need to keep paying for ads on that it just means you know you're going to get yourself ranked up a lot quicker which is what google wants to sh you know you sort of see your you share with google's like hey like I'm advertising this, but I'm not making the people click on it. Yeah. They're coming to it and yeah. that's, that's boosting up. So it's showing Google that it's valuable and you don't need to continue with it. So I, I love that you said uh, organic and through SEO because I feel it's really, it's Google ads had a, a, like a massive place in the market and then Facebook came in. I feel it's kind of making this shift now. Um, and I just want everybody to know about it. It's, and that's our opinion, right? It's just, yeah, exactly. I'm sure there's plenty of other people that say, hey, pay is the way to do it. And yeah. they have it down to a science. Yeah. I just, from a wise investment standpoint, I think rank, it's taking the time to rank something organically is going to give you your greatest return on investment. Yeah. You notice the new Google update. I don't know if it's mobile and desktop, but definitely mobile where the ads are no longer highlighted in they used to have that background color. Yeah. They removed it and now they have just a little icon that says ad. It's, it's much harder to pick out an ad now 
uh, with their new update, which is good and bad, right? It's yeah. good if you're running ads, but it, you know, I think a lot of people have are going to be clicking on ads more often now just because they're a little bit harder to differentiate. And that's a good play by Google because, you know, they are an advertising firm, but they want to prevent people seeing that that is all they are about, especially people that don't realize that they're an advertising firm and they're just an end user. And I dare say that stuff's going to happen in, I noticed that in YouTube ads, uh, all the text is minute and you know, sometimes you can have call to actions, but you've got to put your own call to action. It's not like on Facebook ads where they've got like a big call yeah. to action down the bottom there. So it's a smart play by Google. And I dare say Facebook will probably want to start picking that up. But um, Zach, like I've got, I've got a, sorry, you're going to say something. Well, it's interesting. Like I, I got to the point, I'm sure other people where you're just so used to seeing Google ads that you kind of got numb to it and you just skip through them right to get right down to that first organic slot Me too. yeah and i'm sure they saw it on their profit and loss like hey our, our ad revenue is going down and that's how they make all their money so like we need to make a change i know the first day the update came i clicked on an ad because i didn't think it was an ad so <laughs> i think there's there's a huge opportunity right now if you're listening you have an affiliate website consider boosting one of your topics with an ad uh, especially right now i, I think it can be lucrative yeah I agree. Amazing share. Thanks so much, Zach. Yeah. Zach, knowing what you know now, like if you go back to before you bought your first two sites, before you even knew you could make money online, what would you tell yourself knowing what you know now to not make the blunders or to supercharge your success? We already kind of touched on it and it was be open-minded to any niche or topic. Yeah. That would be number one. And Number two would be take the plunge sooner. It, it, it took, like I said, it took me six months. You know, who knows what would have, what could have happened during that six months that I let something even better go by. Uh, maybe I would have bought three sites by now. So if, if someone is on the fence, I, I, there's no better time as of right now. I, I've been watching, I'm sure you watch the empire flippers listings often every Monday I'm online looking. Yeah. Yeah. Demand keeps going up and the multiples keep going up. I think right now the multiples are still relatively um, low in that mid 30 range. I say give it another four years or so, maybe even less, and we're going to see much higher multiples. Maybe multiples rivaling, rivaling those of like brick and mortar businesses, which are five to eight years typically. So, you know, I, I think it's a good move to get into it now sooner rather than later. So that's what I tell myself. Just, just go for it. And, uh, plus now there's so many, there's so many resources coming out to help people. And these brokerages are all very, uh, they're reputable. They've done so many tens of millions that now it's like, okay, I can trust sending them my money and it being okay. Yeah. And after speaking to, I've had three guys from empire flippers come on the podcast now. And after speaking to them, it's really clear that they do care about their, the, the people that are buying. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's probably the most important thing is because that's how they make their money. And brokers that don't understand that, do they really need to pull their finger out because they're just going to get taken over. And I know Empire Flippers are, are taking a massive part of the market share. But in saying that, when you talked about like, hey, get in now while it's good, it's the same when you're advertising on Facebook or Google or whatever it is. I feel yep. that the online space is so only in its infancy. When you look at other markets like real estate and stock market investing, it's very, they've, they've been around for a long time, but how long has the internet really been around for? And how long have people been making money? Internet's been around for like 25, maybe 30 years or something. Yeah. But, and how long have they people been really utilizing it to make money? And I feel it's only in the last 15 ish. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was so going to say. It's like in its infancy. And now there are, I spoke to Greg and he's the guy from Empire Flippers who wrote the first ever industry report. And great report, by the way. Great report, oh. right? Yeah, he came on and, and chatted about it. But he said there was one site that sold for 57x multiple. And that is, that's, and that's, a, that's what I said, is that a record? He said, yeah, but 
that's where we're heading, you know, in this market. So I'm, gr- I'm glad that you shared that, you know, if you want to get. I think the site that I sold my tech review website, we listed it, I think for 85. I think if I was to list it today, it might be close to six figures just because the demand is so high. You know, I haven't done the math or anything, but just demand is crazy right now uh, for some of these specific niches, it seems like. Yeah. So, um, and I couldn't, so that kind of leads to, I couldn't find um, a website to talk about what we're talking about. So it was why I bought Money Nomad, which uh, I went private market or private party for that, just because I couldn't wait every week to hope that a listing would come up. Um, so that's another alternative that people can take. And even now Empire Flippers, they didn't at the time, but now they have a program where if you bring them, they'll still broker your deal, even if it's not one of their listings. So you get their protection and their migration, but you don't have to wait for one of their listings, which I think is a phenomenal option. Yeah, that's such a great option. So Zach, really appreciate you coming on. It was such good chat, so much value for all the listeners. And I dare say they really appreciate it as well. Where can people go and find out more about you? Moneynomad.com. I actually wrote a five page buyer's checklist that I sat down and I outlined everything that goes through my head when I'm looking to buy a site and I put it on paper. So if you go to moneynomad.com forward slash checklist, you can download the checklist for yourself and use it when you're looking at sites to buy. Um, And I'm, I'm hoping it just sparks some ideas and points out some potential opportunities and pitfalls. Thank you so much. Such a valuable resource. Uh, and talking about resources, I also have some really cool resources. I have a due diligence framework um, that you guys can go away and get for free as well. Um, and it helps you outline like what parts, what sort of things do you need to ask the sellers, right? To, in their due diligence. Oh, nice. Yeah. Then I've also created a um, website evaluator tool that people can go away and they can find out how valuable the website actually is to them personally. And the cool thing that I like about this tool and why I created it for my clients is because it helps you eliminate so much time from going, I'm going to spend a lot of time doing research and due diligence on this website. So it eliminates that, but it also allows you or prevents you from buying something that's a dud listing too. So if you guys want to get that, head to my website, um, buyingonlinebusiness.com forward slash free resources. Thank you guys so much for listening to the show. Really appreciate it. If you did like this, please subscribe share it and let me know in a review what you actually liked about it because I want to ensure that I can get more amazing guests on the show like Zach and cover the things that are really important to you guys on your journey to buying websites. See you next time. 